Thank you. All right, thank you. Can you guys can you guys hear me okay? All right, I'll just I'll just stay away from the mic unless I start to go. Thank you for the introduction, Mark. I'm really excited to be here. Um, this is pretty cool. I've got more electronics, gadgets, speak screen. The only thing I'm missing is a sock puppet. That would take it to the, the top level. We're not going to do that today, but thank you again uh, for coming. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to go over some things. You know, Mark kind of talked to me about you know, what you guys would want most. And kind of like he said, I've been competing since I was in high school and throughout college, which obviously hits on you guys since you're in that phase of life, and then even beyond. So today hopefully I can give you some nuggets of things that have helped me stick with it, uh, push beyond, and that you can take with you. So um, first thing to introduce myself, um, you know, like Mark said, I started uh, uh, in 1992, uh, 21 years ago. Um, I was a, uh, a sickly kid in high school. Okay, that was me. This is actually, this is my sophomore year of high school, but um, I literally was the 95 pound weakling. Literally, I weighed 95 pounds. Me and the heavyweight wrestler did not have to cut weight. Okay, so um, it was, that was um, different. I, have, I still have asthma, it doesn't bother me. I was in the hospital about once a month. I was a sickly kid. I was a mediocre athlete at best. You know, I mean, I was there. Um, you know, I was involved in stuff. Didn't really um, think much of myself. I just didn't really have uh, a lot of confidence. Um, kind of withdrawn. But, um, you know, one day I picked up a muscle magazine, okay? And, and I, I, I looked at the cover. I was like, wow, I like that. That guy looks awesome. What? And I knew another guy that did this thing called bodybuilding. And so I asked him, I said, I said, Bruce, what's it take to do bodybuilding? He's like, well, Ryan, all you got to do is, is be dedicated and, and be consistent. I'm like, well, I can do that. So long story short, uh, 21 years ago, I started my quest for bodybuilding. Okay, And as you can see, um, I, I've, I've had to work at it. All right. So um, I was uh, very fortunate um, in 2009. I did win my, uh, my pro card in natural bodybuilding, which was one of my long-term goals, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, uh, and achieved one of my dreams. And uh, I've been doing that ever since. Um, I've competed as a pro, I think, four times now. My best placement was sixth place. Um, you know, here's a, a picture in my last contest. You know, and, and I, there are guys that look a lot better than me, a lot bigger than me, you know, better everything. But, and that's not why I have this picture. For me, it's more about the difference from the first one to the second one, okay? That, to me, is really what this is all about. It's not about me being better than somebody else or bigger than somebody else, but it's, it's me against me, okay? Um, in powerlifting, I, I, I've, I, I've started to do that. More of something to do in the off-season, right? I mean, who doesn't like to lift heavy things? So... Um, I started doing powerlifting, and lo and behold, um, all the muscle helps. It makes you stronger, and uh, I've been doing good at it. Okay, so now I've kind of turned into this power builder, lifter, body kind of guy. So I kind of do both. Um, I'm getting ready for a bodybuilding competition in July in Sacramento, California, um, and I started my diet at about a month ago. But I'm still powerlifting, and I've got a meet next weekend in St. Louis. So I'm kind of blending the two sports. After St. Louis next weekend, um, I'm going to switch my training around a little bit and, and mainly go bodybuilding with a little powerlifting flavor. Okay? So that's enough about me. Let's start talking about kind of what worked for me to get to where I am and what hopefully you guys can apply to your lives. Um, first thing is, is goal setting. I'm huge on goal setting. Now, to preface this, some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about, actually a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about is going to help you not only with your bodybuilding and your weightlifting and your powerlifting or whatever you do in the gym goals, but also with your career, with your life, okay, with your family. All of these things are going to carry over because that's one of the things that's really helped me, okay. All this stuff, it just filters through the rest of your life. So as I'm talking today, don't just think about getting bigger biceps or big, making a bigger squat, but think about how they can apply to your life. First thing you want to do is you want to set both long-term and short-term goals. Okay, Long-term goals are, like I mentioned before, I wanted to get my pro card. 
I wanted to become pro status as a drug-free natural bodybuilder. It took me 17 years. I'd say that works as a long-term goal, okay? Now, there, in that process, there were short-term goals that I used to get there, right? Um, so let's start about talking about long-term goals. What do you want to do? Okay, the first thing is balance, okay? When I work with clients, new clients, new people, they come in, Ryan, I want to compete in bodybuilding. Ryan, I want to squat a thousand pounds. I'm like, really? You sure about that? Do you know what it takes to do that? And some people are absolutely up to the challenge and they absolutely have what it takes. And that's super. And I, if somebody has a goal, I'm all about helping them get there, but the key is to make sure it's the right goal, okay? So when you're thinking about your long-term goal, think about what's realistic, okay? Do you have what it takes to reach that goal? And is it something that you're going to set yourself up for success, okay? You wanna set your up for yourself up for success. Don't set yourself goals that you're not gonna put forth the effort. You do not wanna fail, okay? Set yourself up for success, be realistic. Um, what I like to do is I set goals in five areas, okay? Five areas, family in this order, career, financial, physical, and spiritual, okay? Those are the five areas that for me, I feel helps me be balanced, okay? Because if you just focus on one of those, or maybe two or even three of those, chances are you're not gonna be balanced and something's gonna suffer, okay? So set your long-term goals. All right, and then in that regard, you're gonna set short-term goals, okay? And these are gonna help you reach your long-term goals. Now, when I do this, I do this every year, and I write it down, I post it up, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up about three things that need to happen to reach each of those long-term goals, okay? Doesn't need to be many more than that, three is plenty, okay? So what you wanna do then is you say, okay, in the next year, what three things do I need to do to hit those goals, all right? And then we're gonna break it down even more. My calendar, I put in monthly and even weekly goals, okay? I even go so far as daily, all right? So for example, for me, my daily goals is, uh, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go train, okay? Obviously that's for physical. Um, Second thing is, I'm going to, you know, do inventory, uh, stock shelves, uh, you know, email clients, that's for my career. Um, also financial, those things work real close together. Uh, I'm gonna work hard, go home, I'm gonna shut my computer, I'm gonna shut my phone off, I'm gonna hang out with my kids for a couple hours, my wife for a couple hours, okay? And then I'm gonna go to bed, okay? I'm gonna wake up the next morning, I'm gonna do devotional with the, with the kids, the family, breakfast is our time to sit down at the dinner table. And that's, that's kind of my day. And I've got that all planned out, I penciled in my planner around all my appointments and stuff. So that, putting my day together like that is gonna help me reach those goals. The key is, you have to be intentional, okay? If you really want those long-term goals, okay, it's not gonna happen on its own. You have to make it happen, okay? If you want to, when you graduate from college and you wanna make a six-figure income, it's not just gonna happen. You have to be intentional and, and do things to make it happen, okay? So goal setting, that's number one, okay? Next thing is consistency. You know, it, it's nice to set big, hairy, audacious goals, okay? Just anybody have some big goals that they want to shout out? Don't be shy um, because I can guarantee that your goal is probably the same as the guys next to you. Win a pro card. Pro card. Good. Other goals? Doesn't even have to be related to weightlifting. Own a nutrition company. Own a nutrition company. Awesome. Other things? One more. Bench 350 by the end of the year. Great goal, great goal. So great goals. And again, those are all very lofty goals, you know, especially where you are, where you are right now, okay? The key to doing that is consistency. Now, we wanna, we wanna focus on all factors. For a second here, I'm gonna talk about training, uh, nutrition, and recovery, okay? 
when you need to be consistent, now we're going this is more about the bodybuilding and weightlifting stuff. You need all three of these, training, nutrition, and recovery, to be consistent. If you miss one piece of the pie, you're not going to make the, the progress that you need to make. All right? Number one is training. Now, what do I mean by being consistent in training? I mean, duh, don't miss workouts. I mean, isn't that pretty obvious? That's the first. Be consistent in your training, but even more so, even more so than that. Um, people ask me, Ryan, what is the best thing I can do? What is the best tool that I could buy uh, for bodybuilding or powerlifting? A notebook, honestly, a notebook. Keep a training log. I have got probably three boxes filled with training logs. Who was it that had the 350 goal on their bench press? You, okay. Right now my bench best is 325, um, and I'm, I'm continuing to climb up. But I remember when I had a 10 and a 5 on the bar benching. You know, I remember that. And I could go back here and I could show you each log and show you how it goes up. And let me tell you, that's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool to look at that and see your progress, okay? But in order to do that, though, every week I go back and say, okay, I did 85 pounds seven times, I'm going to try and do it eight today. Or I did 135 pounds for 12 times, I'm going to raise it to 140. One more rep, five more pounds over 21 years makes a big impact, makes a big difference. Okay, so use that logbook. Okay, that's your best tool. Take notes, be precise. If a set sucked, Write that down. Put a little dash. That's my suck sign. It's a little dash, okay? If it was great, if I need to bump up the weight, I put a little plus, okay? That works for me. My handwriting's terrible, but I can read it, okay? So whatever works for you, but train notebook. Uh, nutrition, okay? Nutrition is going to be about 75 or 80% of, of your progress, all right? Um, you need to be consistent what you eat. You need to be purposeful. Don't just randomly eat stuff. Now, in college, I know this is tough. Who here uh, lives off campus and has their own little kitchen? Raise your hands. Okay. Who here eats in the um, in the um, the hall? Okay. So you know both of those factors are gonna make different scenarios. Uh, the first thing is for those of you that are eating in the halls, you know look to see what you have available. Okay. Plan to eat. Now, if you want to be consistent, I'm I'm very anal. Okay, um, I'm a little warped. My, my taste buds have been warped over the years. Uh, if you uh, go on my website or my blog, you'll see that I put some weird concoctions together. But I know what I'm eating every single day. Okay, I have a plan in place. Even on the weekends, I know what I'm going to eat every single day because I don't want to miss a meal. The absolute worst thing you can do is what? Eat a candy bar? No. No, the worst thing you can do is miss a meal. Because if you miss a meal, you're going to do two things are going to happen. One, you're not going to be recovering, which is our next point. And two, when you do finally eat, you're going to eat whatever you see. Okay? Both of those are bad. So uh, be consistent in your food. If you live in your own place, you know, fix up a week's worth of food. Okay? Fun day Sunday is grill day. Okay? Grill up a bunch of food, grill up a bunch of chicken, cook a bunch of rice, whatever. Just make sure you've got a plan in place. Okay? I'm anal again. What I do is I grill up all my chicken, you know, 10 pounds worth. Did it in the snow on Sunday, by the way. I was pretty proud of myself. It was cold, but I did it. Um, I'm grilling up my chicken 10 pounds worth, then I cut it up. I cut it up into little pieces and I put it into little into small baggies. And then I freeze them, four ounces. That's what I use. So I put them in the freezer. And so then during the week when I'm ready to go, boom, I grab it and I go. You know, I've got my food ready. I don't have to worry about it. So be consistent with your nutrition. Recovery. What the heck do I mean by that? I mean everything you do is about recovering from your workouts. Okay. Um, you don't, you don't, even though the gym is where you make progress, all the gym does is stimulates it. You grow when you're outside of the gym. Okay? That's when you get your nutrition right and you recover. Okay? So, it wasn't that long ago, I keep telling myself, that I graduated college. Um, I know you don't get a lot of sleep. Okay? There's like two extremes. You either get not much sleep or way too much. Right? 
Um, but you need to, sleep's a priority. That's when your body recovers. Okay, you need, to, you need to make sure you get as much as you can. Now, being realistic, you probably, you know, there's some days, you know, six hours, maybe less if you're cramming stuff, but just make sure you get it, you know. Um, we'll talk about this in a second, but you're gonna need to do things that other people aren't gonna do uh, if you have big, hairy, audacious goals. Okay, so you need to make recovery paramount. That also means not overtraining. Okay, now don't undertrain. Okay, the more you do nutrition and the more you focus on recovery, the more you can train. Okay, if you don't get enough sleep, if you don't get enough nutrition, you're gonna have, have a hard time recovering. You better not train too hard. Okay, see where I'm going with that? Again, set yourself up for success, realistic goals. Be honest with yourself. Okay? If you're not willing to do stuff like this, you know, don't think you're getting a pro card anytime soon, you know, or don't think you're benching 350 anytime soon, you know. I mean, just be real with yourself. The law of consistency, all right? Law of consistency says motivation starts, but discipline keeps you going. What's that mean? So, New Year's, New Year's resolution. Who set New Year's resolutions? Andrew did? Yeah, other people, okay, yeah, okay, everybody's motivated. January 1st comes around, I want to do this. I'm going to lose this. I don't want to find this, okay? But that's motivation. Motivation does not last, okay? What makes the difference is discipline takes over when motivation drops away. Okay, that's the law of consistency because that golden moment is not going to last. Okay, that honeymoon period is not going to last forever. I know it seems way far away, but someday most of you are going to get married. Okay, and you're going to be in love and you're going to go on a honeymoon and it's just going to be awesome, but that falls away sometimes. Okay, and then that's when discipline takes over and commitment takes over and consistency takes over okay so again very important rule write that down time management okay this is huge um, time management you need to again going back to my calendar you need to manage your time okay you need to take advantage of every single minute if you want to reach your goals okay um, after I graduated college, um, I started business. Uh, I, I worked in a retail store as an assistant manager. Okay, I worked overnights for a while. I worked overnights for a while, and my wife and I had our first child. Okay, so I'm working uh, many, 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 many hours of the day, not getting much sleep, but I still trained. I still competed. Um, wasn't my best, obviously, but I got it done. And I told myself, I said, Ryan, if you can compete right now, if you can manage your time right now and still make the meals, get your cardio in, get your lifting in, there's no reason you can't do it at any other point in your life. And I'm so glad I did that. Even though it wasn't my best show, I did it. I proved to myself I could. Okay? You need to manage your time so when time gets crazy, and it is crazy already for you, right? Yeah? It's going to get more crazy. So you need to manage your time. So often when I, when, I, when I meet people that are going through phases of life, I got married. I had kids. I had a job. I got a job. I lost my job. Those are major life changes. And if you can manage your time, you can still reach your goals. Scholastic, training, rest, nutrition, social. Did I miss any big things that you guys have to manage in with your schedules? You might have changed the order. You might have put social first. Maybe. Those are kind of the things that you need to look at. So when you're planning your day out, those are the things that you need to focus. I put scholastics first. I'll be honest, when I was in college, I probably wouldn't have done that. Um, probably would have put this first. Okay. Thankfully, that's what I do when I grow up. So it worked out okay. Um, but you want to make sure that you get time for everything, including rest. Okay. If you've got a big test, in a big squat workout, you best be getting enough rest. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time with both. And we already talked about nutrition. And have fun, okay? I want to spend a second on that. Don't be a social outcast, okay? Because in this, in this, in this uh, sport, in this hobby, that happens, 
okay? People become the big ogre that spends all his time in the weight room, right? <laughs> and you know some of those people. Hopefully you're not in here. Uh, don't be that guy or gal, all right? Be social, you know, when I'm training for a bodybuilding contest, when I'm dieting for 24 weeks, I don't hide in a cave. I don't, I don't say, oh guys, I can't go out tonight, or my neighbor wants us to come over for dinner. I don't, uh, sorry, I'm dieting, I'll see you in July, you know, no, <laughs> no. You need to be social, don't, don't, otherwise, you know, a lot of, you need to have, be social, meet people, be out, otherwise, you know, if you want, I like to turn people onto the sport. I don't know about you guys, but I want to see people lifting weights and getting stronger, building muscle. If they think you're a weirdo, no, I ain't doing that. So, you know, I mean, you manage your things, you bring your food to dinners, maybe, all right? Maybe you schedule it around your workout, okay? You still manage your time, but, Get out. Be social. Don't let it engulf you. All right. Dedication. This is one of my favorites. Goes A lot of these things, you'll notice some similarities, but dedication is what you're going to need to to achieve what you want. All right? So first thing, remember those goals we talked about? Okay. I want you to share them. Share them with yourself first, and that means printing them off, hanging them up, Put them on your fridge, put them in your bathroom, whatever, put them in your training book, wherever, just so you can see them and remind yourself. Share them with your friends. Share them with your family. Let them know. Otherwise, when you show up with your chicken and your rice, they'll be like, Doug, what? What's up with you, man? You know, they'll know. They'll know. You know, when you're buddies. All right, I had a reunion with some of my fraternity brothers um, a couple weekends ago. And I was dying. And I had to tell myself, I'm like, Gosh, I haven't seen some of these guys for, I don't know, 10 years. But I'm like, I'm dieting. I'm not drinking a beer. You know, I'm just going to have to, to accept that. And I go there, and, and they were fine with it because they knew, they know what I do. And they, they know that, well, Erwin's dieting again stuff. I was there. I had my caribou coffee in my hand. I stayed up, <laughs> you know. But, um, you know, you just got to share those goals so in those social situations, that you're not, you're not like tempted. Hopefully your true friends aren't going to be sitting there and say, pizza, pizza, you know? I mean, hopefully they're not going to be those people. If they are, uh, they're probably the ones you don't need to be hanging out with at those times. All right, reestablish yourself annually, all right? That exercise we went through at the beginning with the long-term goals and the short-term goals, continue to reestablish themselves. Once you, once you hit 350, set your next goal. Okay, set your next goal, continue to push. Just my goals for 2013, just from a uh, uh, bodybuilding, weightlifting standpoint, uh, I want to bench press two times my body weight um, at 165. Uh, I want to squat 425 without knee wraps. Um, I want to deadlift 550. Um, I'm running real good on all three of those goals right now. Uh, compete in bodybuilding in the summer. So far, so good for that. Um, oh, and, 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 and be able to blend the two. Because one of my jobs right now when I'm dieting is to keep my strength as best as I can. Because as soon as I get done with my show in July, I'm going right back to the powerlifting platform. And if I want to get back to that pl powerlifting platform, I need to make sure I don't lose strength while I'm dieting. So that's one of my goals. But reestablish annually all those goals, all the five different areas I set forth, I talked about. All right, become what? I like this, I like to tell myself, what do I need to become to, to be what I want to be, okay? So for example, you know, I want to be, um, you know, as, as good as I can in bodybuilding, powerlifting, I want to run a successful company, I want to be a, a great husband, a great father. What do I, who do I need to become to do that? Okay, so you might need to ask yourself, okay, who do I need to become? You know, do I need to become somebody who's always preparing their food? Yes, probably. Do I need to become extremely efficient with my time? Yeah, I do. Um, do I need to uh, remove myself from social, certain social settings? Maybe, maybe. Um, do I need to find a new training partner? Maybe. <laughs> um, by the way, that's one of the 
best valuable tools you've got. So if you've got yourself a good training partner, or if you're a good training partner, pat yourself on the back. Because next to a training log, that's about the best thing you can have. If you suck or they suck, drop them. It's not worth your time, okay? Um, but who do I need to become to achieve that, okay? I was always very, very self-conscious of my voice, okay? Um, so I was always like, I, that was part of my withdrawal thing, okay? Um, and then one day, and I was short, you know, and I was 95 pounds, I'm like, it was almost like an epiphany. I woke up, I said, Ryan, I go, you need to be more outgoing. I'm like, otherwise, you're going to be screwed for the rest of your life. I'm like, yeah. So I started laughing at myself, you know. Instead of letting people pick on me, I picked on myself. It wasn't fun anymore for them, you know. And then, and then we started having fun. And then, you know, I started doing wrestling. I started bodybuilding. I started getting on stage in my underwear in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> well, that pretty much drops any boundaries what, right there. So needless to say, I've gotten out of my shell. I started speaking in public, you know, I started emceeing, I was on, on the radio and stuff. So, you know, you just, you need to, if, if you believe in yourself, that's the first person that you need to convince, okay? If you believe in yourself and, and you become who you need to become, you'll hit your goals, okay? Because by doing that, you're going to do everything we've already talked about, okay? So think about it. who do you need to become to reach your goals? All right, determination. I got this picture here. This is one of my good friends, Jim Einerson. This is from a powerlifting meet we held three weeks ago at Nutrisport in the studio. Jim lost his leg due to a severe staph infection. Okay? Um, he lost his leg and he's gone through a lot of tri trials. You know, I mean, that, that's tough. You know, you lost your leg. And, um, but since then, he's had a new outlook on life. And he started getting into weightlifting. Started with bench pressing. I mean, right? That's the first thing you do, you know, when you're in high school. You're like, I'm going to bench press. And I'm going to curl. And I'm going to bench press. And I'm going to curl. Um, so he started with that. And he did that. He's like, you know what? I can do more. He's like, I think I can deadlift. I think I can do that. He got his balance. Yeah. Yeah, I can deadlift. So he started deadlifting. He's, and he's competing. He's competing in the bench press and the deadlift. Three weeks ago, He's like, I can squat too. I can squat. Sure enough, he was able to bounce on that. That was his body weight that he was squatting. He went for 300 pounds. Not only did he achieve his goal of squatting his own body weight, but he even tried to go above and beyond that. Okay? He did not get the 300 pounds, but you know what? He wasn't afraid to try. So there is a guy who's got determination. That's what you need to have. You need to be able to, to go past what most people will do. It's not going to be easy, okay? When I was 95 pounds and, and just, you know, weak, and, and I'd see guys, I was, you know, a freshman in high school, and I'd see these seniors just benching 350 and, and big arms, and I was like, gosh, man, I don't know. And I, I kept telling myself, well, wait a second, they weren't born that way. You know, they weren't born that way. They had to work for it. Some worked harder than others, but they, didn't, they had to work for it. So I kept telling myself, all right, I just got to keep working. Got to keep working. You know, those, those nights when I was the only one in the, in the weight room, I had to keep working, you know. Um, when everybody else was out sledding or doing whatnot, well, I got to keep working. Okay, I knew, I knew that it would pay off someday. Okay, and lo and behold, I mean, I'm still 5'4", but a lot of other things have changed. So... You know, it's not going to be easy, okay? You need to enjoy the grind. You need to enjoy the daily grind, okay? There's going to be workouts that just rock your world, okay? Um, I don't know why. Whenever I hear this, I always think of squats, right? Who, who here uh, doesn't like to squat, okay? I didn't either. I hated it. I absolutely hated to squat, okay? I was like, no. You want me to put how much weight on my back, on my back, and then squat down, and it's on top of me? Seriously? I hated to squat, but I learned to love it. I love squatting. I love legs. There is nothing better than going to the gym, just demolishing your legs to the point you can barely stand, and hobbling out of the gym. I say, you know what? I just did more than about 98% of the population will ever do. You know, I love that feeling. I love it. 
people will curl, people will bench, but let's go squat, you know? Yeah. You can see it. I had a squat workout today. Loved it. I had a sinus, uh, and I'm a little clogged up today, but I had a head cold this morning. Oh, okay. Funny story here. So I go into the, um, I go to the gym, my head cold. I call my wife, and, uh, you know, she, she has a wrist thing. We were both icing. I was icing my knee last night. She was icing her wrist. That's a sign we're getting older. Um, but I, I said, yeah, honey, I go, I got a sinus infection. And I don't feel so hot. She's like, uh, <laughs> what did she say? She said, suck it up, princess. <laughs> I'm like, yes. So find yourself somebody that says, suck it up, princess. That's good stuff. But enjoy the grind. Enjoy the grind. That's what you need to do. Prove it to the most important person, um, and that is you. Okay, you are the most important person, um, you know, going back to bodybuilding, okay, you're on a, you're on a stage with about you know, five to ten other people, and you've got like five to nine judges in front of you who will say, I like you, I like you, don't like you, I like you, okay, it's very subjective, okay, you're in a powerlifting meet, you're on this platform, and you're just, whatever you got, and then some other guys warming up with that like it's nothing in the back room, okay? You need to compete against yourself because ultimately that is going to either make your decision if you're a winner or if you're, if you're not, okay? So compete against yourself. You're the one that it most matters to, okay? Every day counts. Every day counts. I love this phrase, okay? Um, I've got shirts made that says every day counts because they do, okay? You can't make up a workout. You can't make up a missed meal. If you lose it, it's gone. Oh, sure, you might do the next workout, that workout the next day, but you lost today, okay? You might eat that next meal later, but you lost the hour you were supposed to, okay? Every day counts. If you want to reach those big, hairy, audacious goals, you need to take advantage of every day. All right, effort in equals results out. So I want to show you a quick little video here. One of the things that I like to do is um, I like to put videos out, um, which, but I'm, I'm big on, again, like I said, I like to share information. I want to get people involved in this sport. I think it's a healthy lifestyle. I think it carries over to a lot of things in life. So um, I'm going to show you a quick video of just an example of some of the things that I've got up on my website here. This is Ryan with Nutrisport and Full Potential Training in Clive, Iowa, and here's a tip to help you reach your full potential. Hey guys, Ryan Irwin here with you, and today I'm going to talk about one of the common problems that people have with supplements. We want to be practical here, and so I'm going to solve one of life's great mysteries, all right? So, you know when you get to the bottom of a protein container and you're trying to scoop it out, you just can't get it? Doesn't that suck? Isn't that annoying, right? Okay, I've come up with a solution. So, what you do to get that last little bit of protein? First thing you need is a drill, right? Okay, I've got a one and a half, uh, one and a half uh, inch width bit right here, all right? I don't know what you call this thing, but it's sharp and it puts a hole in it. So, then what you do is you take it and you're going to drill it right here into the protein, all right? So you got to punch it in like that. And drill! Be careful! Right? Okay. I got a hole right here. Then you take a measuring cup and you just, boom! Look at that! Right there! All right, that last little bit of protein that you can't get. That, my friends, that's at least 12 grams of protein, and you don't want to waste it. So stay tuned, check back for more videos, and we'll keep solving life's mysteries. So there's, <laughs> that's me being a little silly, all right? But you got to have that. You got to have some fun. So. Uh, but anyway, I do. I've got, if you go to my website here, NutrisportFPT.com, you look to the right-hand side, I've got a lot, I've, I, I keep videos all the time. Uh, I'm big on research, okay? Um, like you guys, uh, I went to college and I'm big on, let's see the science behind things. So I keep uh, the, the newest things based on science. 
exercise stuff, usually videos have a little bit more content than that one did. Uh, also, I've got a lot of videos on YouTube. It's the same ones usually you see on our website. And then Twitter, and of course I'm on Facebook because even my dog is. So, um, But that's about all I have for that. But I'm absolutely welcome to take any questions on anything, whether it's nutrition, training, supplements, or whatever. Questions, yes? Thanks for watching the video. If you like it, please share it with your friends on Facebook. Please follow us and like us on Facebook on Twitter as well. We're excited about our new studio. Besides the personal train, we now have group classes, TRX, kettlebells, yoga. Uh, we we'll continue to do the nutritional supplements and coaching. Thanks for watching and keep tuned in.